mbet2.com Hatponi online kazino Yenge mijozlar üçün 3000 euro gece pul Ve 100 de gece tekin spinler Ruliyatka, karta ve slot oyunlarını oyna Katta yutuklar ve tezbor dolaular Her hafta bonuslar ve aksiyalar mbet2.com Hazır o 3000 euro gece pul Ve 100 de gece tekin spinlerini polge kritik
And Harold Calderon finally getting the opportunity that he's been calling for for several years here in our co-feature. Round one underway. Harold Calderon taking a massive step up in class here tonight, certainly through no fault of his own. He's been taking the fights that he's been given, as I mentioned, kind of in obscurity on that Florida circuit over the last couple of years. Yeah, but the good thing about being down in Florida is you get great sparring, and he, you know, he may not have the stiffest opposition in terms of who he's fought. He's been in the gym, been in the ring with, with some very talented guys throughout the years. South Florida is a hotbed for boxing. Calderon scored knockout wins in eight of his last 10 outings. I saw Chakram Giasov scoring a unanimous decision victory over Christian Gomez on the Canelo Beevil undercard. It was a nice left hand that broke through from Harold Calderon. And you see a natural size advantage for Calderon in the ring. Giasov's second fight is moving up to 147 pounds, really for full time. So we'll see if Calderon can use that to his advantage tonight. And although Calderon does have the height and reach advantage, advantage Giasov is very explosive. He jumps in with shots. A lot of times with the lead, leaping lead left hook, which can be effective against the southpaw. It can also be dangerous too, right, Chris? I mean, if you yeah. jump in like that, increase your chances of getting caught. And when I watch Calderon fight, that straight left hand, that's got some muscle behind it. I've always thought that about Giasov, that he jumps in, but his timing is very good. He's able to, to get away with it, even against some good fighters. Giasov certainly has that hallmark kind of bouncy back footwork. There's a nice left hook for Giasov. Time that beautifully. Chance of Harold here in New Orleans. He certainly brought a crowd from Florida here tonight. You mentioned some of the famous fans. They're part of the uh, the Calderon stable. He is all fighting with very wide stance and elbows flare. An interesting tactic. But what does that suggest to you, Chris? Does that mean he's looking to load up on hooks? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it goes with this explosive style, but you got a guy who's tall and long in front of you. It, it, it's a, it's, you're within range to get hit, and you don't have a lot of footwork to move when your feet are back wide. You take some away from your power punching if you are set. Shot down the middle there from Giasov. About a 20 seconds, round one. Giasov being forced to work off the back foot a little bit more than he's used to. Yeah, because he is putting a lot of physical pressure. Not throwing a ton of punches, but, but making his body away, you know, press, present in front of Calderon and looking him into corners.
that shot from Calderon. The fuse and the, the crowd that has traveled here for him. Chance of Harold once again, but Giasov wraps a nice sweeping right hand around the guard of Calderon there. Nice right hand to the body as well. Giving Calderon different looks, moving that right hand around. Yeah, I think the two shots to look out for from Giasov in this fight are that right hook that he's thrown to the body quite well and also the left hook upstairs. Especially if he combines the two, I think he would have success. Right hand low, left hand high. There it is. That's the old uh, the Danny Garcia combination. Yes, yes. Right hand low, left hand high, and opposite sides of the body. Very difficult to defend. Final moments here of round two. A couple good moments in this round for Harold Calderon. Shakram Giasov taking control here down the stretch. Dealing with one of these, you need the free fix finder service from AutoZone. It checks these warning lights. To email you a detailed report, it's the most complete free warning light report backed by technician verified fixes. Our lives are the sum of our choices. This mission of yours. He's gonna start fading after the fifth round, all right? Back on top! Back on, back on, back on. As round three gets underway, we send it over to Chris Mannix, who's standing by with an NBA champion and very interested observer. I am here with Kendrick Perkins, NBA champion, ESPN analyst, also would not stop yelling at me between rounds of that last fight. You were yelling me a little bit. Were you surprised to see me? Not at all. Yes. How, how could I not yell at you when you were known as a color sports illustrator? You do what I can. I do what I can. You're also a close friend of Harold Calderon, 27 and 0 coming into this fight. Why do you think he's ready for this type of fight? Well, you know what? I I feel like he's getting up. He's getting up in age. An older fighter, 27 and 0, 18 knockouts. And uh, Harold and I've been close friends for about the last three years. And I told him I'm gonna get behind him. Uh, I got a special love for boxing, and I got a special love for his passion. And he deserves this opportunity. What do you like about what you've seen so far? You know what? Be patient. You know the first couple rounds, Chris. He's feeling the mouth, but he's gonna unleash in a minute. You better believe that. Good to see you, Bert. With all of these <laughs> guys. Thanks so much, Chris. Thanks, Bert. He's uh, putting a lot of pressure here. Good shot there on Calderon. Yeah, nice answer. Good feint there. Well, to your point earlier, Chris, the, the pressure from Giasov is it's constant. It's constant footwork. It's constant feints, constant level changes. Even if he's not throwing, there's always something to think about if Giasov is in front of you. Yeah, it's a physical pressure. You know, he's doing it with a lot of movement, feinting, throwing looping shots. And Calderon, from what I've seen from his past fights, he's at his best offensively when he's, when he's backing a man up and coming forward. Not as effective when he's fighting off of his back foot. He boxes well from there, but his power comes from when he's moving forward. Calderon with a couple straight left hands there. Nice counter shot there from Giasov, counter right hand. Giasov starting to get a little bit more playful here. I mean, Giasov is stopping right in Calderon's range, but Calderon is not pulling the trigger. Yeah, Giasov is basically planting his feet and daring him to exchange here. Yeah, he's trying to bait the offense out so he can counter it. Ducks underneath, left hand from Calderon. Jason Quigley. <laughs> 
His power comes when he's coming forward. He's not really a, a counter puncher off of his back foot. It's that point then, a very good game plan for Giasov to basically dare Calderon to come forward and force him to be uncomfortable as he has seemed to be throughout this contest. And there's not much coming back at him. I don't know why Giasov is not throwing more. He's getting into position and not firing. Giasov fights with a very wide stance. Right hand to the body there from Giasov and follows it up with a nice left hook. It knocks Calderon off balance. I think the, uh, the running dance move was nicer than the hook, actually. You know, you ask Chris why he doesn't follow up or he's not pursuing as much. I mean, you wonder, too, if maybe a lesson was learned from the fight with Vector Melaguzzi up and Gabe Rosado. I mean, these guys are all stable mates. And, oh, great Good shot, man. Good shot, Good shot. You, you wonder if that may, makes him a little bit more cautious given that happened to a guy that he's very close with. Well, and there were also some kind of scary moments for Giasov against Christian Gomez last time out as well. I believe in the seventh round, Gomez got through to him, had Giasov at least temporarily in trouble. There's Calderon. Left hand down the middle. That was a really nice shot that split the guard of Giasov. Straight right hand right down the middle. Nice hard, clean shot from Calderon. A combination that I'm watching Giasov set up all night, finally landing. He throws the, the, the straight right hand down to the pit of the stomach, comes back with a left hook upstairs, which is a great combination against the southpaw. Finally landed really well a few moments ago. Step back counter there from Giasov. Hands at the side once again. Trying to bait Calderon in. Action picking up. So coming up next, it is our main event. The Roop. Here we see that, that combination I was talking about that Giasov has been setting up from to the left hook up to the head. Landed that twice in that last round. Round five begins. Our co-feature between Chakram Giasov and Harold Calderon. Our main event between Progre and Zoria up next. As Harold Calderon sneaks through a nice right hook to the body. Giasov just missed with a counter left hook. Put everything into that one and just whizzed past the face of Harold Calderon.
has nine KOs and 13 fights, but he's far from a one punch. Now he has a shot in the end. He keeps a nice left hook shift into the end. Saw Brock Christian Gomez three times in his most recent bout. That was in May of last year. Yeah, we use the term recent loosely. Yes, exactly. <laughs> You and I were at that fight on the other part of Canelo and Bibble. The 20 seconds here of round five, Calderon still hesitant to let his hands go as Giyasov bangs him to the body. And Giyasov slid in, slid in a couple nice left hooks just under the elbow of that lead arm of Calderon this round. Upstairs, upstairs, upstairs. But the corner a few rounds ago said that he's going to tire after the fifth. So maybe their idea is to pick it up on the back end. He is on look for that sweeping left hook. Again, one at a time from Giyasov. Had Calderon along the ropes there, didn't choose to follow up. Nice right hand down the middle from Giyasov. Swooping left hand catches Giasov and the punch. Calderon trying to probe with that left hand. Tries to find a Giasov firing back. Inside the final minute of round six. Starting to take a few steps closer to Giasov here. Giasov looking for that leaping left hook. We've seen him score some knockouts early in his career with that one. But it's the left hand of Calderon who reaches the body of Giasov. Yeah, nice little body shot there from Calderon. a double jab moments ago. Not snappy, but at least he threw two. I haven't seen much of that tonight. I think that would be a great weapon for him being as long as he is coming from that southpaw, southpaw position as well. Final well, 10 seconds of round six. Harold Calderon starting to inch forward just a little bit, but you'd have to believe this is another round in the bank. Interesting advice at the corner of Harold Calderon there. You know, Chris Algieri, you said earlier 
you noted in the corner, they said, hey, after round five, we think Esau will tire, then we'll turn it up. Oftentimes, we'll hear fighters talk about that, but they don't explicitly enact it. But in the corner of Calderon right now, they said, let's go out and make this one fun. Let's just go to the inside. Well, they said exactly what I said last round. He's making a lot of mistakes. He's got his wigs too 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 wide. He pulls straight out with his shit up in the air. It's, he's got his arms out. The, it's true. There's there's a lot of times that Calderon could take advantage of those positions that DSL puts himself in. Well, Chris Maddox, how do you have this one scored so far? Yeah, I've got it six rounds to none in favor of Chakram Giasov. I just think he's controlled the vast majority of each of these rounds. His punches have been sharper. The power punch edge is to him as well. I agree with Chris Algieri. He's, there have been opportunities for Calderon to land some consequential stuff, but as his corner just noted, you're just giving away some of these rounds in the back end of it. It'll be interesting to see if Carol Calderon has that extra gear where he can just sell out and try to make it a war. Well, he's starting to take steps to the inside there. A couple exchanges to the body. He has saw the Calderon trading shots to the body a moment ago. You know, up until this round, I mean, with Calderon, there's been no urgency. It almost looks like he's sparring. And now he's actually throwing and landing some shots. Well, how much of this can be attributed to his level of opposition to this point? And, and probably not in live action, having faced someone like Giasov, certainly not, but someone that's going to make him think and, and fainting him. He's mostly been able to dictate every round of every fight of his pro career to this point. Yeah, he hasn't been able to dictate a second of this fight, so it's definitely a different thing. Right now, he's letting his hands go and throw it with some heat. And one of the key attributes of Harold Calderon with that wrestling background is that physical strength on the inside. We'll see if he can heed the instructions of his corner and work his way in there. We'll see if Giasov will allow it. Nice jab there from Calderon coming in. Speaking of that wrestling background, I don't think I've seen these guys clinch once. No, I don't think you've had a single one. No. Again, just advancing on Calderon with his hands down. It's so strange that Giasov gets himself in punching range and just doesn't throw. Well, neither man throws. But especially Giasov puts himself there and then pulls out or jumps out. He has a good shot. Right hand from Giasov to close out round seven. seemingly in full control here against Harold Calderon doing just enough round after round we would assume to be ahead on all scorecards at the moment Calderon's posture changing a little bit maybe thinking about trying to get to the inside there he lands a left hand to the body at the Open, you spoke about the other Uzbek fighters moving ahead of Giasov in the pro ranks. And one of the reasons is that the guys go out and they look to get sensational wins. We're not we're not seeing that from Giasov, especially here. He's, he's happy, satisfied just to win every round, where I think he could really make a statement here if he, if he let those hands go. There's a three-punch combination from Giasov. That may be the most fluid combination we've seen from him to this point in the fight. Catches yeah, that one off the left hook to the body. And he lands two great shots. I mean, he, he's, we've been saying that for rounds now. He throws one punch at a time, but when he lets the combinations go, he is a lot more effective. And if Calderon 
is waiting for Giasov to tire, I mean, he's going to run out of rounds. Because at this pace, I don't, I don't see Giasov getting, getting too exhausted. I got it. No pushing. No pushing. Hey, no pushing. Okay, let's go. If you're Calderon and you see Giasov fighting this way, hands down, sticking that chin out, kind of daring you to really engage him, you've got to take advantage of it. You've got to at least try and go after him if he's going to fight like that. Left hook from Giasov. Swings and misses with the right hand. And the chance of Harold can't drown out the booze right now. Smoothie King Center. I got it. No puncture. Let's go. That's it. Giasov certainly seems to be stepping on it a little bit this round. Letting his hands go a little more. Trying to push the action. You know, is it possible that this is Giasov who's been out of the ring for more than a year? maybe trying to get a few rounds and we have seen that from Beck the Bully in the past and not to lump all those Beck fighters in with one another but is this pure hesitance or is this a little bit of rust? I would think that would be a silly thing to do. You know, a boxer is not a safe place to get rounds in. You get cut, you break your hand. There are a lot of things that can happen in a, in a boxing ring. Put you on the shelf and he does not have time for that. Chakram Giasov. However, I think it's noticeable that the, the tenor in the corner of Giasov changed a little bit. They seem to be a little bit more aggressive or trying to invoke some aggression from their fight. Yeah, it definitely seemed that way. There was, they want him to work, push, get more. And look, the exact same message came from the corner of Harold Calderon. His corner wants Calderon to step to Giasov and start throwing some punches. <laughs> oh, great left shot. Calderon. Corner is yelling, he's hurt, he's hurt. I don't know if that's the case, but it's emboldened Calderon a little bit and maybe Giasov as well. The hardest punches of the night were landed by Giasov on his own shoulders just now. There's Calderon letting his hands go once more. I don't think Giasov is hurt, but those were definitely impactful punches landed by Harold Calderon. We've been saying it all night, but he throws, he's effective, he just needs to do more. Step to him, step to him, Calderon. Calderon's either been hesitant on his own accord or just dazzled by the constant movement of Giasov, even though, again, it's been mostly one punch at a time from Giasov. Like yeah, it's pretty clear after eight rounds that Harold Calderon is not going to be effective fighting Giasov off his back foot. He's got to move forward, and he's got to try to press the action. So Giasov walked him into a nice counter left hook. for Calderon if he does want to be successful and get to the inside. Giasov is a sharp counterpuncher. He might get hit with some of these shots. But if he continues to stay on the outside, I think we have a pretty clear picture of how these rounds are going to go. Underneath the eye, the left eye of Harold Calderon. 
We can't tell if there's any swelling as of yet. So we'll get a closer look in between rounds. There's a right hand down the middle from Giasov. Homero tries to apply, blocked by Giasov. And that'll do it for the round. And we're very excited to have boxing back in the Big Easy as we take a look at the Superdome, the home of the New Orleans Saints. And our home for tonight, the Smoothie King Center, which houses a world championship boxing, including our main event, Regis Progre and Daniel Lito Zoria, which will be coming up next. Round 
11 begins. Saw the work being done on the cuts over and underneath the eye of Harold Calderon. Chris, uh, those seem to be ones that are obstructing his vision right now. No, no, they're they're not in, in, in dangerous positions at all. It doesn't seem like the blood is, is falling into the eye. That, that's the problem with cuts, is the bleeding into the eye and blinding that side. The uh, the cut above the eye doesn't seem to be bleeding much at all. Even if it is, it's a little bit to the outside. It'll go trickle down the base, not into the field of vision. This fight is considered an eliminator by the WBA. Both these men inside the top 10 in those sanctioning body rankings. And we'll see that title being defended here on the zone on July 8th. Steny Onis and Ortiz Jr. go at it. A little victory for either one of these men would take them a step closer potentially to a shot at the winner of that fight. You know, I just checked in with the corner of Chagrom. He is uh, talking to Joel Diaz for a minute, and he's saying a lot of the same things we're saying here on the broadcast. They want to see a little more explosiveness from their guys, not as active as they'd like him to be, and they really want to pick up the pace over these last couple of rounds because they don't think there's much threatening coming back from Harold Calderon. Step back counter there from Giesa, but Calderon lands a nice right hook as well. Yeah, not seeing as much of that explosiveness from Giesa as I've seen in the past. He settled down on why partly because of his, his feet versus his stance is so wide. It's very difficult to generate any power in close cover distance like that. Counter shot to the body there from Calderon. Nice left hand as well. Calderon's going to need a lot more than that. If he wants to pull this one out, beautiful counter shot there from Giesoff. Beautiful counter shot, Corey, but then he just sat there and admired it right on 10 seconds. Yeah, he's not built on anything he's, he's done. He's, he's set a, a couple moves that he wanted to land. He lands them but never builds on them. Giesoff maybe starting to feel it a little bit in there, but the showboating is seemingly to the ire of the crowd here. And I think they're seeing exactly what you guys are seeing. He lands a nice shot. And in that instance, opted to dance rather than follow up. He's celebrating a little too early.
combination to the body from Giasov a moment ago. Giasov now just flicking the jab, perhaps content to take a possible shutout victory here in this eliminator and move on to the next one. We saw a brief flicker, a brief flicker from Harold Calderon in the first 30 seconds of that round that showed kind of aggressiveness we haven't seen for most of this fight, but here we are, a minute 15 remaining, and we're kind of back to what we've seen for most of it, which is Calderon fighting off. I'd like to have seen more in rounds through 1 to 11, but is there any point in Giasov selling out at this point for the purposes of entertainment? I think so. You do that? <laughs> I, <do. laughs> I, I would say so, but uh, I mean, yeah, from his side, is yeah, but, I, but again, nothing's coming back right. from Calderon that would give him any impression that he was in danger. And that's exactly what Joel Diaz and, Yeah, and that's what's coming from Joel Diaz, and I'm sure coming from everyone in the corner of Giasov. You're not in a lot of danger there in the ring. Why don't you go out there and see if you can land something big? Landed a shot to the body a moment ago. Giasov landed a couple shots to his shoulders. Unless the boxing gods now smite us and <laughs> counter all scores a one punch KO. Final 10 seconds of this contest. As Chakram Giasov managed to nullify Harold Calderon all night long. Calderon asked for the step up for many years. He got it but just wasn't able to pull the trigger with enough regularity here tonight. You know, I think for a guy like Giasong moving forward, activity is going to be the key. As we mentioned, his first fight since May of 2022. He doesn't need to go another calendar year before he gets another fight. If you're out on, I think you learned something in a fight like this. You learn what it takes to compete at the highest level. What the distance with a really talented guy. So certainly things you can build on as your career moves forward. And I think when he, when he looks back, he's going to see all the things yeah. that we were talking about in terms of all the places that he could have got in. How much success he did have when he did let his hands go. And how hittable Giasov was. So I, I think, like you said, this could be a good learning uh, situation for, for Calderon. But it will be 36 in six days. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights from this contest. going be a lot of single shots coming from Giasov. There's a nice straight right hand, which is a good weapon against the south ball. You split the guard, get your head offline. Here we see a big overhand left from Calderon, catching Giasov on the chin. And we saw a combination from Giasov with the right hand down the middle, left hard power jab over top, which is again, very good movement against a, a southpaw to move outside their lead foot, stay invisible as we say in the gym. And it looks like we are ready to keep this one official. here tonight for him. And he is uh, perhaps preemptively uh, celebrating, but coming up on July 8th, Imanta Staniotis takes on Virgil Ortiz Jr. for the WBA welterweight world title as both men put their unbeaten records on the line.